Oh, they're they're really athletic. They've got an extremely athletic quarterback, uh, really good um, good running backs, uh, great receiving core, good offensive line, and, and offensively, I don't know exactly who they are. I mean, they do about everything under the sun. I mean, they'll get into they they've run so many different plays. I mean, they're just you know you really don't you really don't know what their identity is on offense, and and they're really good at a lot of different things, but they're 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 very 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 multiple. How much different is that from from what you saw a year ago? They just kind of completely retooled. Oh yeah, I mean months. you're talking about different coaching staff, a different coordinator. They're they're completely different than what they were a year ago. You started just where they've been before, and is this pretty similar? I mean, do they do they kind of follow the same track? Are they is the staff usually a group that just tries to do everything? As far as when they were at Toledo. Former, you know, where Coach Beckham's been before and stuff like that. Is this yeah, really yeah. No, they're similar. They're they're similar. They do a lot of things that they did at Toledo, but um, they also have you know uh, different offensive coordinators. Um, one I know came from LSU, so there's some of the elements of, of what they've done at LSU. And and again, I mean, they they just they're so multiple in what they do out of different personnel's and 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 they're they're not easy to prepare for. Anytime you toss in the quarterback run game element too, that's a whole different dynamic, and and the uh, it's going to be a great challenge for us. The defense is to be improving its discipline as, as the season has progressed, <clears throat> and then at the what are you saying? Game, we weren't disciplined at the beginning. What's that? We weren't disciplined at the beginning. <laughs> improving. Improving. I'm just kidding. Um, you know, and yet on the touchdown pass to the tight end, you had five guys uh, that were. Coming after the passer, how much of it is a trust? Just guys having to trust their teammates. Do you know what that blitz is called? It's called guts. You got to have guts to run it because it's all out. It's beyond a zero blitz. I mean, it was one of those. It was one of those deals. In that point in, in time in that game, they was, I believe it was third and goal, and we were coming all out, and and they had shown that they were going to run down there. And and we were, we were pinning our ears back, taking a chance. And and Mal had even asked Wills. He said, you know, he goes, we're gonna come after this right here. You feel good about it? If we, you know, we're not very good in coverage here. And that's an understatement. I mean, we were we were we were coming. And no, we were coming after him. And and the thing the thing about it is they we had used we had used our timeouts. And it was third and um, third and goal. So we we got to stop them, or you know, or you know what happens? They score and we get the ball back, and, and our offense at least has two minutes to try and go down and, and you know and win the game. So it was a calculated risk, is what it was. Total evaluation. Just how did you feel about the way you guys just defended the option, considering how long you guys have been working on it, how long you guys have focused on it? Uh, I mean, you look in the first half. I mean, I thought I thought our guys, our offense, obviously did a tremendous job. And in the first half, we gave up a touchdown. You know, and and um, and I thought our guys played really well. We gave up one drive, and and then the second half came out, and I think the the third quarter, I believe we gave up. Um, was it? Did we give up a touchdown, or was it a field goal? I can't remember. Um, and um, anyway, uh, played decent, played solid in that third quarter. Got through, um, but when you're playing an offense like that, it, it, they just they keep pounding, keep wearing on you. And and um, we needed to have a few more, a few more more tools. We need to come after them a little bit differently. But our kids, as far as I've said it every week, our kids are playing their tails off. They're doing what their coach to do. We got to do a better job of finishing, and we got to do a better job of. Of, um, of putting them, continuing to put them in better situations. It's a little bit out of left field maybe, but, but having to prepare for that offense in the middle of the Big Ten season, does that kind of maybe sharpen guys up a, a, a little bit, just kind of something totally different that they have to kind of take a break from, from I don't want to say normal offense prep, but something that's just they've never seen before? Does it kind of maybe grab their attention and re-engage them? Well, it grabs your attention. I mean, that, that offense is no joke now. I mean, they're, they've got, if you really study it and look at how multiple it is and, and all the different things they do, and I mean, they, that's a very, very, very difficult offense to defend. And they're kind of hitting their stride a little bit with their quarterbacks, doing a nice job. But yeah, to play that, to play that game when we played it, it's not ideal. 
I mean, but it is what it is. I mean, it's on your schedule and, and you line up and, and you pin your ears back and you go. But, you know, next year, I believe we have them the second game of the year, which is probably about where you'd want to have that game scheduled, not right after you get done playing Ohio State, Michigan State. But again, not making excuses. You hear a lot of coaches around the country, they're talking, they make, they, they talk about, well, our linebacking core, we're missing these guys and we're, you know what? It doesn't matter. I mean, we're missing guys. Chase Hubler hasn't played since the first quarter of, um, of um, UMass. I'm, I'm not sitting up here whining about it. It is what it is. It's next guy up. And it's the same thing in the schedule. The schedule is what it is. And, and you go and, and you prepare and, and you pin your ears back and you go. And so, you know, there, there's never an excuse. The, the, the only thing that it's disappointing, it, it sounds like a broken record, but as a program, we're tired of losing. And our kids are tired of losing. You know, we've got a head coach who, who brings it every single day. And, and our kids are taking on that attitude and taking on that mentality. And we're just, we're so close. And we got to get over that hump. And, and we're going to. I mean, it's not, we don't, we're going to get over the hump. And, and you know, so that's kind of, it's frustrating. But again, it, you see the progress. And it may, might be hard for everybody else to see it. But I'm telling you. These kids, I'll put our film on. Defensively, statistically, you can spin it however you want. And you can say, well, you ranked whatever, whatever, whatever. There's a lot of different reasons. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. No excuses it is what it is. But the fact of the matter is, I will put our tape on against anybody in the country and, and put it up, and our kids are in good positions 99% of the time, and they're playing their tails off. And, and, and that's a credit to them. These kids play as hard, not saying they play harder than anybody in the country, they play as hard. There may be teams out there that play as hard. I don't know. I don't worry about those guys. But I know this, there's nobody out there in my mind that's playing harder. And, and to me, that's, that's a, a direct reflection of the head coach, and it's a direct reflection of our kids buying in and playing for each other.